Greetings all, Ferrari Mad 601 here. In the turbo hybrid era, one of the most interesting things that we do have going on during a race is the race start. Now I know that some time ago I did a little feature on race starts, however that was in a normally aspirated V10 car. In the turbo hybrid era, race starts are a little bit different, mostly because these turbo hybrid power units generate so much torque from a standstill. Of course, the reasoning behind this is not only do we have an internal combustion engine, a piston engine, a V6 turbo, but we also have electric motors adding into the overall mix of power being transmitted via the gearbox to the tarmac. Electric motors, as many of you know, generate maximum torque from zero, meaning that from rest they can go pretty much instantaneously to their maximum power and torque output. So there is very little room for torque modulation on the part of what the driver is able to do. Gone are the days when you could just control the wheel spin via feathering the clutch and the throttle strategically just so that you make sure you don't get too much wheel spin off the line and you get more traction. With these turbo hybrid power units, there's so much torque and it's instantaneously delivered you really do have to think through your start process before the lights go out here in formula hybrid 2018 courtesy of race sim studio let's take a look at the race start procedure first off you'll notice that we're here in the pole position starting grid slot at Monza. However, first we do have to get the engine started and we have to go out on our formation lap, which is another very important part of the start procedure. We'll get the engine fired up here and of course on the steering wheel you'll be able to see engine RPM and the gear that we're currently in. Down in the lower left you'll see the pedal trace as well and the pedal trace obviously going to be quite important for this little maneuver. The formation lap begins and of course this is technically lap one of the Grand Prix, not counted as part of the race distance, however, but it is very important in terms of what the drivers have to do with their car. It's a time when the drivers are thinking about temperatures, engine temperature, brake temperature, tire temperature, and they're also trying to make sure that all of their settings are correct for the race start. We'll get off on our own formation lap here, and I'm just going through some settings now. The MGUK delivery has been turned off. We're in charging mode and our recovery mode, this is harvesting off of the rear axle under braking, I'm going to turn this to zero for the start. So we're going to be on pure engine power here, no hybrid assist. Our MGU-H mode is going to battery, so no power going down to the rear axle under acceleration whatsoever. Formation lap will get underway, the clutch is in, we'll select first gear, and we'll raise the revs here and we'll do basically a practice start, but not a full-on start, because remember we have no hybrid assist. We'll raise the revs a bit, so we don't bog down. We'll drop the clutch and spike the revs, and we'll just lay a little bit of rubber down in the start box. As the drivers tend to do in the first few moments of the formation lap, they'll go up and down through the entire gearbox just to make sure that the computer knows where all the gears are. And also that's to help calibrate the clutch because obviously the clutch is entirely automated once the driver has pulled away. First part of the formation lap here, you really won't see the drivers weaving around so much because they're trying to keep their tires fresh for the race start. However, they are going to be building brake temperature. You'll see that very steady stop going into the second chicane there. We're just trying to build brake temperature. At Monza, it's a little bit difficult to build brake temperature on the formation lap because there are comparatively few braking zones around this circuit. However, all of the braking zones are approached from very high speed. As we come down the back straight here now, we'll start to weave back and forth just to get a bit of more temperature into those tires. Pretty much 50-60% throttle here. We're not trying to accelerate very much. We're just trying to weave around and get some temperature into those tires. And of course onto the brakes. Brake in a straight line. You don't want to run the risk of flat spotting your tires on the formation lap. We'll continue to do weaving down the back stretch here as we approach the final corner of the lap. And the brake temperatures go temperatures are going to be a little low, so we're just going to drag the brakes a bit. You'll see the drivers doing this on occasion on the formation lap. We approach Parabolica now. And here's where you'll see the drivers really start to hold back as they approach start-finish. Approaching the grid, here's where the fun starts. 
Burnouts need to happen here. This gets the clutch up to temperature and also helps build temperature in the rear tires. The drivers will have a set number of burnouts that they have to do before they get to their grid slot, so we're going to do three of them. There's one. There's two. And we're approaching our grid, grid slot. We'll do one more burnout. And there we go. And here's our grid slot, and we're lined up in there. It's very difficult to see the grid slot itself simply because of the way the monocoque is around you. However, as we wait for the rest of the field to assemble behind us, we now have to get into our race start mode. MGUK delivery will go to hot lap. The MGUH mode will go into motor and our recovery rate is going to go to whatever we think is best for the race start. We'll start at 70%. Now, as the lights start to come up, clutch in and first gear will be selected. Now, we have full hybrid boost in addition to the 800-ish horsepower from the internal combustion engine, so that combines to about 960 to 1,000-ish horsepower, depending on how strong that ICE is. We'll raise the revs, and it's very important to make sure that you get the revs very high in the rev range in these turbo-hybrid cars. About 10.6, 10.7 is where you want them to be. So you gotta hold the revs there as best as you can. The lights will come up. Three lights, four lights, five lights, pause. We partially drop the clutch, we allow the wheels to spin a bit, and off we go. Now that was not the best start. And the reason why that was not the best start was because, well, we basically spun the wheels a little bit too much. It's very difficult to get that perfect start hooked up in these cars. Now let me show you what I mean. We'll flip the car around here, and we'll go back to the grid. Remember, we have the full combined power of the internal combustion engine and the hybrid system. That's over a thousand horsepower, and those rear wheels, despite us having done those burnouts going to the grid, they are going to be overwhelmed in their tractive effort capacity. There is a lot of torque going through that rear axle, as I said. Remember, the electric motor generating maximum torque from zero. So back to our starting grid slot here back into neutral. Clutch in. First gear. Now, when we release the clutch, it is not just nail the throttle and drop the clutch. The clutch release happens in two stages, basically. Watch the pedal trace there in the bottom left. The initial pull away, when we have throttle dialed in, will release the clutch about halfway. So about here is where the initial clutch release is going to be. This is finding the bite point on the clutch. If we pull up reverse here and I just start to come off of the clutch, you'll see the car starts to creep forward or reverse. Right about there, the revs drop. So that's the initial part of the bite point. But if I dial in some throttle, you'll see that the car will pull away, but not aggressively at all. So what we've got to do is overcome that initial friction of the tires on the tarmac as well as make sure that we don't brake traction too severely on the rear. So, full hybrid power coming up. Our recovery is where we want it. Clutch in, first gear. We'll raise the revs again. You want them pretty high. First release, second release. That was slightly better that time. It is not just a full-on clutch release. This is what happens if you nail the throttle and drop the clutch. The rear tires are just immediately overwhelmed and you just can't get any bite into the track surface. So that's definitely not the way to go with this procedure. Once more to the grid. MGUK delivery to hot lap. Recovery is where we want it. Lights are coming up. First gear. Raise the revs to about 10.5, 10.6. Release the clutch on the throttle a bit more. Second part of the clutch release. And then just feather the throttle until you feel the rear end bite 
and that is how you start one of these turbo hybrid Formula One cars. Of course, the first lap off of the start has to be pretty deliberate. You're going to have people around you fighting for position as well. In addition to having to think about where your car is. So there's a lot going on in the first lap of the Grand Prix in 2018. Add to that the visibility issues that arise from Halo, and you've definitely got yourself quite an interesting spectacle from the cockpit on the first lap. At a place like Monza, where there's a big emphasis on acceleration and then braking efficiently from high speed, you really do have to be very deliberate indeed approaching those braking zones. Your tires are not going to be up to full operating temperature on the first lap. The rears are maybe going to be a little bit hot, depending on how much you lift them up off the line. So definitely, the first lap at this place in particular is very difficult. Remember, the car is also full of essentially 100% of its capacity of fuel. And you're most likely running harder compound tires for your first stint at a place like this because you're gonna be burning that fuel off, remember, but you wanna go as deep into that first stint as you can to maximize any real estate that you can gain on that first lap. So certainly, the start, more than ever, I would say, is very critical in 2018 Formula One. In any regard, let's take a look at that start from external cameras and show you what that looks like as we come off the grid. First of all, here is that start in real time. We'll wait for the revs to rise. There's first gear selected, the revs are coming up. And you can see as we pulled away there, the initial pull away, as evidenced by the skid marks here, not very aggressive. Yes, a little bit of wheel spin, but not all that much. We got a good first phase of that start. However, as we go up, as we get back onto the throttle in first gear, another set of skid marks very faintly here, so a little bit of wheel spin, and then pulling second gear, we get a little bit of wheel spin again here. So the start happens very much in two phases. There's the initial jump off the line, which was pretty efficient, and then you're not out of the woods because as evidenced by these two further sets of skid marks, you can definitely get yourself some wheel spin as you pull up through the rev range in first and second gear. And depending on how you've got those MGU deploy settings configured, you can even get those wheel spin moments in third and fourth gear as well. So you definitely do have to keep all of that in mind off of the line. Looking at all of this in slow motion, you can see we've got about 35% throttle dialed in. The revs are up and we're just waiting to release the clutch. Unfortunately, we don't get a clutch trace here, but just watch the front and rear wheels as we pull away. There we go. The front and rear start moving in unison. We get a little bit of spin up there on the rear in the initial launch phase, so a little bit of wheel spin. Just back off the throttle slightly. That wheel spin is stamped out, and then as we continue to accelerate, you'll watch. Here comes the second set of skid marks. There we go, a little bit of wheel spin there. And the third set of skid marks, a little bit of wheel spin there. Notice our throttle has not moved all of that much. There, second gear pulled. A little bit more wheel spin there as we get into second gear, and we're just feeding the throttle in now. There we go, full throttle. Only at that point, you can see the distance from our grid slot. Only at that point can we hit full throttle and then accelerate as normal. And then, of course, this only represents about two, two and a half seconds of real time. We're already doing 170 kilometers an hour, which is about 100 miles an hour for those of you measuring in old money. So the acceleration off the line is very very fierce, but it all has to be managed very precisely, almost with a feather touch, in order to get the maximum bite in the track surface when those lights go out. A good start can be the difference between having a very productive first stint or being absolutely nowhere for the entire duration of the race. Hopefully this was a little bit informative for all of you, a little bit of a feature on race starts, particularly now that we have so much monstrous torque delivery in the turbo hybrid era. Thank you all very, very much for watching. If you have any questions, please do let me know about that in the comments. Ferrari Man 601 saying thank you, and we will see you soon.